Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amanda Rose and today I have a video for you guys that I think is going to be so, so helpful. Now, all over YouTube there are videos on how to do Google Slides, how people do PowerPoints for their lessons, but I couldn't find a lot of videos on how to use Keynote. And this is the number one thing that I use in my classroom. I know that using Google Slides is so much more um, beneficial because you can do something at home and then you can just like access it on your work computer. But I love all of the animations and all the visuals with Kino and I think that it makes my presentations look amazing. Every time I have like a new co-teacher or if I'm working on a presentation in the teacher's lounge, people are always asking me, well, oh, what are you using? How do you do that? So I know that they stand out. I always thought that they did, but when other people give me compliments and, and are asking how I do it, it's like, okay, that means that they are a lot better than maybe what I had originally anticipated. So I'm going to show you guys how I use Keynote, which is max version of PowerPoint. I have never purchased PowerPoint because unfortunately Mac does not come with Microsoft. They have their own version. They have Pages, which is their version of Word, and then they have Keynote, which is their version of PowerPoint. So I'm going to be showing you guys, if you have a Mac, how I like to use Keynote. It's how I do all of my presentations. I can also make a lot of my worksheets on here too, but specifically I'm going to show you guys how I make presentations. Now, in a second, I'm going to show you guys a clip of a presentation that I made two years ago. Um, or I guess it's going to be three now. So this is in 2017 when Mayor de Blasio had made an announcement that he was going to begin the process of closing down Rikers Island, which is a jail here in New York. And I thought that it was really important, uh, one, to talk to our kids about it because they're not just removing the jail, they're replacing it with like mini ones all over the city and two I was in the process or I was teaching a current events class and so the two things just meshed so well together so first I'm going to just insert a clip of what that presentation looked like and then I'm going to walk you guys through um, a like modified version, a simpler version of that presentation, and I'll share with you guys all of the different animations, how I like to put all the pieces together. I cannot explain every single thing in this video, but I tried to pick the things that I thought would be the most helpful for a visually appealing presentation, but also I just think that using Kino is just so easy and so fast. I can put a presentation together in 20 minutes or less, and including all the visuals, animations, and so hopefully you guys find this video helpful. If you haven't already, please make sure that you like, that you subscribe to my channel, and if you want, you can check me out on Instagram. My name will be in the description box, but let's get to it. I'm gonna show you guys how to make class presentations using Keynote. All right, so now that you guys have seen what a typical presentation looks like, now I'm gonna walk you guys through the steps on how I was able to achieve that. Um, I'm gonna go back and forth. Some of it will be just full screen and other times it'll just be side by side, uh, but let's get to it. So first things first, you wanna open up a new document with Keynote. I like starting with a fresh background. I just like a white standard background. I know others, there's so many different options there, so many different themes. 
lip. Uh, but I just like the standard white background. I think that it works first perfect. First, I look for an image on Google search. What I love about this is that you just have to copy and paste. You don't have to save the picture um, to your computer. You can just copy whatever picture you want and then paste it onto the document. Once you do that, you can resize it to whatever size you want. You can make it small. In this example, I made it the main focal point of the front of the presentation. And then I added a text on over it. So adding a text is really simple. You just go to the top where it says text and then you can write in whatever text that you want. Here, once I finish writing in the text, I highlight the entire thing and I change it to the font that I want. I love using Impact and also Market Fill. Those are like my top two fonts. I love going back and forth between those two. I like using Impact when it's like an announcement or something really important. And Market Fill, I use a lot more just for like day-to-day -day notes. So once you highlight it, you can pick the color that you want for your text. And then I'm showing you here how you can put the text in a box. Go to text and see all of the different options on boxes that you can put around your text. I like using the one with the black border. Add a background color, then I just make the text as large as I want. So this would pretty much be the students do now once they walk into the room. Then, usually I do this a lot with the classes that are co-taught or if I have students with uh, learning challenges. And so I like to put images. I like to take pictures of pens, pencils, notebooks, loose leaf paper. It does seem like a lot of work, but adding a visual aid on the presentation, I just, I just think it just is so necessary for some of my classes. So I just go in and I search for a pen and I look for the pen that I want. Now, here is one of the coolest things about Keynote. You, as long as you have a picture with a white background, you go to this option on the right where it says Instant Alpha. So you have to make sure that you are clicking the image. And with a white background, you can completely remove the white background of that image. So now, instead of having a weird white box on top of my Rikers Island photo, I just have the pen. And I do this so many times, so it's really cool when you want to have like a bunch of different images pop up on your screen. And sometimes the boxes can um, cut off the other images. You use Instant Alpha and it's just the image and it makes the world of a difference, especially when you see it projected on a large screen. And now I'm just going to re- um, align my pen just a little bit and then I'm just going to drag it down so that it's right next to the word. Next thing, we're going to add a new slide. So you just go to the presentation, click new slide, and then I'm just going to change the background color to this nice blue. Here I'm just showing you guys that this is where I would put my learning objective. You can change the different fonts and then I'm just showing you how you can add boxes on top of boxes. There's actually an easier way to do this. You can do the boxes first. Um, you can stack them on top of each other and then put the text right on top. I kind of did it the opposite way. I made it a little bit more complicated, but still you can see just adding different shapes to add a little bit of dimension to your presentation. Then I go to my next slide. Again, I just add a slide. So here I'm just pasting a picture of a map of where Rikers Island is and all of the other surrounding locations. I felt that it was really important for our students to know where Rikers Island was located. Oftentimes we talk about places, but they don't really get to see the geography. And so I wanted them to know, hey, here's where Rikers Island is located. And it's so close to where we are as a school. Look at where Yankee Stadium is, look at where the Bronx Zoo is. And so the point of this specific slide was for them to see, oh, it's right there. And then this is everything else, all of these other areas in the city that we're so familiar with and how close they're located to Rikers Island. 
So here, really simple, you can go to the top and click shape. There's so many options of different shapes there. I like using the one that you can just have the border. And then you can go to the side and you can click the type of border that you want. I like this one, it almost looks like a chalkboard border. And then you can just reshape it and duplicate it and add multiple um, wherever you would like. Then same thing, I went to shape and I just added an arrow. I resized the arrow, picked a different color for it. Now here I'm just working with animations. My goal is to have the circles pop up in the different locations when I'm talking about the location. So you just make sure that you highlight the image that you want to put the animation on and then you just click animate and you can move and play around with all of the different animations that are available. For this example, I like just using pop. It's probably the one that I use the most often. It's simple, it's easy. Um, and so I added an animation for the circle and the arrows to pop when I clicked it, when I was ready to talk about it. Then another thing I wanted to show you is that you don't just have to add animations onto the specific images, but even depending on the transition that you choose for your slide from one to the next can add a really cool effect. So here, I love using this specific transition when I have multiple photos on the next slide. So here, I'm just copying and pasting one of the photos that I had in that presentation, and I'm just pasting it three different times just so you can see how the transition affects the images when you have multiple images on the same slide. So I'm just resizing them. Again, this is just for example purposes. Ideally, I'd have different photos. And then I'm going to go to the slide that was before this. You can see here at the top, it says no transition effect. So I'm going to add an effect. The effect that I like using for this is called perspective. It just brings everything in all at the same time when you click the transition. So I click perspective and then you guys are going to see what that looks like when the entire presentation goes through and I end up clicking to the next slide. So oftentimes you don't have to add an animation on every single image because that can become time consuming, but the transition that you choose from one slide to the next can add a really cool effect and takes three seconds max. So on the next slide, I wanted to show you that I know this is also available on Google Slides and PowerPoint, but your text itself can also have a transition, which is super simple. So I just wrote um, whatever I wanted to write here. Text can also have a cool transition. Then you just scroll down, find the transition that you want. I love Anvil, it's usually really dramatic. And then from there, you can just change your font. I love using Market or Market Felt. And then from there, I'm also just gonna add some images and just make it fun so that you guys can see other things you can do. And I just wanted to show you guys that you can just take pictures. Again, copy and paste from online. I just put a random emoji, it has nothing to do with the topic. This is just for demonstration purposes. And then you can add animations on both. So 
I'm going to add an animation onto the text that I wrote and also onto the image. And you can also choose how you want these images to be presented. Do you want them to happen right after the transition? Do you want them to happen at the same time, one after the other? And so on click when you press it, so you can choose whichever options you want. Then I'm just showing you guys here that you can pick transitions for every single uh, slide that will move from the next and it does make a difference to the overall presentation. Then the last thing I wanted to show you that I love doing is I love taking screenshots of the worksheets that the students are going to be working on. I like adding them into the presentations. Again, I find it necessary and I just enjoy it, if I'm being honest, to have a visual aid of the actual worksheet. I can point to the board versus just holding up a small little paper and trying to like show them where I want them to read. So as you see here, I'm just adding a new slide and I am going to just remove the things that are here, remove all of the text. Then I'm gonna open up the worksheet that I'm using in class and I take a screenshot of the worksheet. Once I take a screenshot of just the first page, not the entire thing, that's going to save on my desktop. Then I'm gonna go to my desktop and I'm going to just drag that onto the slide. Once I drag it onto the slide, then I can just rearrange it I can add a text that explains to the students everything that they are expected to do, which is really cool. And then you can just rearrange everything to the way that you want it to look. And then for final touches, you will see in a second, I'm also going to just add a highlighted area that I like to use as well when there are certain things on the worksheet that I want the students to pay attention to. So if you go to shape, pick the color of whatever shape you want. And then if you scroll down to opacity, you can just fade the color. So it almost looks like it's highlighted. So when you're talking to your students about it, you can then point to the directions that are highlighted. And it's just a really easy way to just add some focal point and attention to the things that you want your students to do. Again, I do not do this for every presentation, but if I had the time, I would, one, because I enjoy it, and two, I really do love the effect that it gives in the classroom. It adds so much more than just slide, words, picture, words, picture, words. So here you guys are going to see the presentation played out in full after I've added transitions on every slide. I'm just going to play it through to you guys so you can see what it looks like. So hopefully you found this helpful. Again, it's not everything that you can do on Keynote, but it is the most basic things to make your presentations really look great. And so I hope that you guys enjoy. I hope that you liked it. As always, I will see you guys in the next video.